Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily photography show on YouTube. Today's topic is going to be about resolution. Resolution is one of these topics that I think once you fully understand it, you just kind of take it for granted. And then every once in a while, something comes up in conversation and you go, you, you, you really don't actually understand this, do you? And that's happened recently on a uh, comment conversation on one of my videos. And I kind of had to give up on the conversation because I thought this is this is going nowhere. Um, either there's there could have been a communication, a language barrier. I think the person I was speaking with wasn't um, communicating with wasn't a native English speaker. But I figured at this point, this is, it's a good idea to just put one of these things out there. Let's just have this conversation about resolution, what it is, what it means, how to understand it, and so on. So um, very quickly, good morning again, everybody who's watching live. Good morning from, I see Italy online here, um, people around the US. And again, tell me, tell me where you're calling in from. It's always fascinating to see people learn where people are coming in from. Okay, so resolution, you're gonna hear it in two different ways. You hear DPI and PPI, that's dots per inch and pixels per inch. You'll often hear cameras or digital images referred to as DPI, and technically that's not really right. It should be PPI, pixels per inch. The terms are used interchangeably. So when you hear one, it doesn't mean anything different than the other for most people's minds. But what it really does mean is a printer prints in dots per inch. And you might see a really nice inkjet printer that prints at something like 2,400 dots per inch. And you're thinking, I, I can't print an image at 2,400 DPI. There's no way. You don't have to have your image at 2,400 to print it. The printer is going to interpolate. It's going to add dots in there. It just makes for a better quality print. But DPI, dots per inch, is generally referring to print, whereas PPI, pixels per inch, is referring to the digital image. Again, used interchangeably. I will probably use them interchangeably today, but that's just, just getting that part out of the way, DPI versus PPI. And look at that, people calling in from Cincinnati, Ohio, Thailand, Argentina, Germany, West Palm Beach, Florida. God, I love this international crowd. So cool, so cool. Um, okay, so... The reason that this conversation came up was because someone commented that they wished that the Lumix camera, um, in general, I think we're talking about the GH5 specifically, it doesn't matter. They wished that it shot at 240 PPI, but it doesn't, it shoots at 180 PPI. And they wish that it did because they wanna be able to print on their printer, their Epson printer that prints natively or ideally, I guess, optimally at 240 PPI. And, and so oh, hold on a second, I think you don't understand resolution because pixel per inch is completely irrelevant. And we're back and forth a few times and I, I just you know, had to step away from the conversation. So ooh, more people coming in, so Alabama, Dallas, Texas, love it. So here's, here's the confusion level. People see this number PPI and they think higher resolution is better. And you're right, you know, when it comes to printing, higher resolution absolutely, absolutely is better. There's a diminishing point of diminishing returns. Uh, you'll often see, well, like this Epson printer, this chap is talking about, uh, prints at 240 DPI, and that's its kind of ideal sweet spot. Maybe if you get up to 300 DPI, you're gonna see a, uh, a little bit better quality. You get past that, you're probably not gonna be able to tell the difference. If you were to print lower with a 100 PPI image, then you would definitely see a quality difference. You would see the resolution drop. On, on the print. So, okay, so this, this matters then, right? It absolutely matters. And yes, it matters in the sense of what you set the file to when you send it to the printer. But what the camera creates is completely and utterly irrelevant. The PPI that comes out of your camera, if you take a JPEG from the camera, and that's what we're gonna do in just a moment here, take a JPEG out of the camera, open it up in Photoshop, and you go to the image size, and you look and see what it is, you look at the inspector, and it tells you that it is X number of pixels per inch, and it's X numbers of pixels wide and X numbers of pixels tall, that pixels per inch, as far as looking at it on screen, is utterly irrelevant. If someone tells you that they want you to, they want you to send them an image for their website at 180 PPI, irrelevant. It means nothing. They are not completely familiar with what they are asking for. Pixels per inch, dots per inch, only matter when you're going to print. When you're looking at it on screen, it's just pixels, right? There, You can zoom out and effectively have more pixels per inch, but your screen resolution is a defining factor there. You can't add or subtract pixels on the screen. It's just gonna make stuff up. This is why when you look at an image at one to one, if you zoom in one to 100% on one screen versus another screen, a bigger screen, a higher resolution screen, a retina display that you see on, on a lot of Macs or retina on your, um, on your phone or iPad or on PCs, I think now they're called high DPI screens, there are more pixels per inch on the screen, but the image itself isn't changing. So 
I realize this is probably still a little bit confusing if you're kind of not totally sure what I'm talking about. So the easiest way to understand this is for me to open this file in Photoshop and we'll take a look at what this all means here. So uh, let's see here. Let's switch over to find the right button. There we go to the Mac. And it's a picture of this fabulous little, I think it's a bearded dragon. This guy's so cool looking. And I'm going to go to the image menu and go to image size. And this is, again, straight out of the camera. Okay, let's get this in the center here, and I'll zoom this in and make it a little bit bigger, nice and easy to see. Okay, this is the only number that matters until we go to print. Forget print for a moment. Only thing that matters is the dimensions. What came out of the camera? 5,184 pixels by 3,888 pixels. And if you want to do the math on that, let's let's uh, come here, bring this guy up here. If you want to do the math on that, you go 5,184 times uh, 5,184 times 3,888. And you see this is a 20 million pixel image, 20,155,392 pixels. So that is a 20.16, if you want to round, or 20.1 or 20.2, whatever megapixel image. That's where your megapixel count comes from. I'm not going to move over. I'm doing the whole picture picture thing. That's where the megapixel count comes from. It's multiplying the height by the width and getting a number. That's how many millions of pixels you have. OK, so there we are on this so far. Uh, let's go back to this. Zoom out of there, get rid of the calculator. Okay, so 5184 by 3888. And you see here, width, 5184, height, 3888. Resolution at 180. Okay, so now we're going to make some changes in here. I'm going to say this resolution. Oh, also, let's take a look at the image size, 57.7 megapixels, uh, megabytes. That's kind of a, it's a, that's an easy way. If we look at that, if we keep an eye on that, we will know if the image has been resized or not, uh, been scaled or not. This is kind of an important indicator to just keep an eye on as well as the actual dimensions. Okay. So let's go to, um, let's just change the resolution. Let's change this down to 72 DPI, which was the kind of the standard back in the early days of digital, kind of your standard um, resolution, your screen resolution. You heard 72 DPI all the time. Now it's, that's like ancient tech now, but that's that was kind of a standard. So let's we'll start with that. Okay, so 72 DPI. I punched in 72 DPI, and what happened? My image size changed. We go, well, yeah, see, so that's why DPI matters. But then look down here, the width and the height also changed. Because what's happening is we have basically scaled the file to say, we're saying keep the same dimensions, the physical print dimensions, while running it at 72 DPI. You go, well, hold on a second, that's not what I want. I don't, I don't want to change my file size. But look, here, this checkbox has been enabled. Resample, it's, it's resampling the image. It's going to change the file size. So let me reset this. Uh, if I hold down the Option key, by the way, in Photoshop, your cancel turns into a reset. So we're going to reset this. Now I'm going to disable this guy, resample. I don't, I don't want it to resample. So now I'm going to go in here, and we've got 5184 by 3888. And you see this? there's a little lock thing here, right? And this is showing me right now, if I were to print this at 180 DPI, this would be a 28.8 by 21.6 image. OK, well, let's punch in that same 72. Now it's a 72 inch by 54 inch image. But here's the critical part. The image size has not changed. The dimensions have not changed. The pixels have not changed. Let's go in here and type in 240. Now it's a 21 by 16. Let's type in 1000. We want a 1000 DPI image print. Now it's only a five by three inch image. But the whole time, the image size here has not changed. So in the case of our friend, let me go ahead and reset this, who's saying, I wish that the camera shot at 240 DPI or PPI. Let's disable the, res the resample, type in 240, and voila, you have a 240 DPI image just as if it came off the camera. This number has not changed. We have not altered the dimensions. All we've altered is the relative print size at 240 DPI because there's only 5,184 pixels wide. We don't have infinite pixels wide. If you do the math, 5184 divided by 240, you're going to get this width, 21.6. Same with the heights, 3888 divided by 240 pixels per inch gives us 16.2 inches, right? You don't believe me? Let's just do it up, 5184. Let's get this out of the way. Divided by 240, and there we go, 21.6. There's the 21.6. So this whole idea is that if you just forget about PPI for a moment, your image is a number of pixels. You can choose to print that at any resolution you want. You can choose to print it at one pixel per inch. It's going to look like crap. You can choose to pr print it at one pixel per inch, in which case it would be a 5,184 wide inch image. Look, let's just do it. Let's do that. Let's go in there and I'll say, I want a resolution of one. I now have a 5,184 inch image. 
by a 3,888 inch image. Well, that's stupid. That doesn't make sense. So let's go to 100. 100. Let's just go by factors of 10. Now it's 10 DPI. Watch the decimal places move. 100 DPI, 1,000 DPI, and you see the decimals moving in here. Maybe we should zoom in a little bit closer here. Let's do that again. Starting at 1, you see it's 5184. 10, it's now 518. 100 is now 51.8. 1,000 is now 5.184. The the pixel count, the number of pixels does not change. So when your camera produces an image that is 180 DPI or 240 DPI or 10 DPI, whatever, completely relevant, open it up in Photoshop or whatever app, and you can change the relative print resolution, the relative resolution to the inch uh, print size. Now, if at this point, if you need a image that is whatever, 20 inches wide at 240 DPI, then you can enable the resample box and just either scale it down or scale it up. And that's a whole different discussion. And there are different ways to scale down or scale up. There are tools that you can use to scale up. Printers themselves will interpolate and add resolution. And usually if you're going to be scaling up because you need a higher DPI image um, uh, print for you know, more than what your file is to start with, you can absolutely scale up. And there's lots of techniques to do it. Uh, just as kind of a, a basic tip in Photoshop, if you're, let's say you're going to scale, you need to scale like three times or something like that. Instead of just going 300% increase, it's better to go 200% increase and then increase it again the last, whatever the math works out to be, like 70%, whatever it is, 50%, I guess, at that point. I think that's right. Um, scale it multiple times. There are apps ooh, um, is it on one that made it perfect resize. Is that from on one? I think so. Perfect Resize is a really good scaler. And what it does internally, you don't see this, but what's happening behind the scenes is it's scaling in steps because that usually gives you a better result than just a, a one-time scale. But if you don't have that software, you don't want to spend the money on that, going into Photoshop and scaling up in steps is often a better way. There's also, as you can see in here, if you are resampling, there's different ways to do it. You have, um, you see, you've got uh, different ones for enlarging, preserved details are bicubic smoother, um, bicubic sharper for reduction, and just different types. And you can leave it on automatic, or you can go through these options, try them out, and just compare them side by side and decide which one's going to look best, which is kind of a really more hands-on way to do it. But the automatic, frankly, works really, really well, um, whether you're scaling up or down. So if you're, let's say you're going to do a five by seven. Okay, let, let's go down. Let's say you're printing a five by seven and or eight by ten. Let's make it a nice, nice size print. You're going to do an eight by ten, and the printer that you're using, or your whether that's a physical printer in your office or it is a company that you're talking to, and they're saying deliver this file at eight by ten at three hundred. PPI. That's what we want. We want 300 PPI, 8 by 10. Okay, so you go into Photoshop. And let's go in here. And if I type in 300, uh, where are we? Okay, if I type in 300, see this is this. Did I, let me reset. Let's just do a reset here. Boom. Okay. If I type in 300 in here, then, uh, oops, sorry, reset again. Let's do it one more time. Reset. Do not resample. Okay. If I just type in 300, I've now got a 17.28 by 12.96 image. Okay, that's bigger than I want. And if I say make this 10 inches wide, uh, okay, without cropping, it's to be seven and a half, but that's fine. We're just going to call it 10 inches wide. Now it's 518 pixels per inch. Resolution is 518 pixels. You think, oh, that's too high. The printer doesn't want that much data. So we go to resample. And now watch your image size up here and your final dimensions. Now I'm locking it at a 10 inch wide print and I want this at 300. And now look, the file size went down 19.3 was 57.7 dimensions, 3000 pixels by 2250. That's 10 inches by 300. That's 3000. So there you go. So that is how that works. That's really all there is to it. It's not a really complicated conversation, but I think if you're not familiar with it, the whole thing of DPI, PPI can get a little bit confusing because you're thinking, well, the camera is not higher enough resolution or whatever. No, the only thing that matters coming out of the camera is the actual number of pixels across and up. That's the data that matters. How that data is translated once it goes to print is completely up to you and you can change that data without adding or throwing away any pixels at all. You may end up with a higher or lower resolution than what you ideally want, but you can do that. And this whole idea of, well, it only shoots at 180, it should shoot at 240, completely incorrect. It's just it's just incorrect. It does not matter. Uh, the camera, come, the images happen to come out of the camera at 180. That's, an, I don't want to say an arbitrary decision. Someone made that decision and that's just the way that it is, but it doesn't matter. If the camera started outputting 10,000 DPI images, it would matter. It's still the same number of pixels. So that is all I want to say about 
that. So let's see, I'm gonna check the comments here if there's any questions about this. Otherwise, that's kind of it for today's photo moment. Um, uh, da -da -da. Oh, someone's from the UK calling in, awesome. Uh, someone from Australia, <laughs> someone from Australia is asking, um, Australia, or someone is asking, Australia has free vlog for the GH5, how come other countries do not have it? That was a local decision in Australia to give it away. That is not a Panasonic global decision. It's not free, it's not a free upgrade because there's two reasons for it. The development, the R&D that goes into creating the vlog is significant and it's very, very few people actually need it. And so by taking that cost and making the people who actually need it pay for it versus making everybody pay for it when, I'm gonna make up a number, let's say 1% of the users actually want it, it's more fair to those who don't want it. It's just one of those one of those things. That's just the way it is. Um, also, because Vlog is very specialized, it is, um, it is complicated to use. And if you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna create an image that looks really bad out of your camera. Panasonic would have to deal with an infinite number of support calls. And this is not just made up, oh, you know, this might happen. No, this would happen. This does happen. Infinite support calls saying, my camera's broken. The image quality sucks. Why does my image look so flat? This is ridiculous. You created a crappy camera. And Panasonic tech support then has to handle, has to field all these calls from people who don't understand what Vlog is, but found it in their camera, turned it on because they saw something on the internet that said Vlog is awesome. They turned it on and went, my camera sucks. Why does it do this? Vlog is a very professional, very high-end workflow. Very few people need it. For those that do, spend the hundred bucks or whatever it is, and you're going to get the feature. For those that don't, you don't need it. You don't have it. It stays out of your way. That's the answer to you of why it actually costs money. As far as why it's free in the in Australia, that was their decision. Panasonic Global has nothing to do with that. Okay. Um, on one was correct. Thank you, Mason, for, um, confirming that that perfect resize is from on one. And um, oh, and Achita is saying, would I mind? Would I lower the microphone around three kilobits? It's a bit sh bit shishy, sh 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 bit shishy, bit shishy. Interesting. All right. Let's try. Let's see. Um, let's take down just on the right one. In the high end, you want to be to take it down about 3K. I think. Okay. I take it down about 3K. Well, let's see if that's any better. Um, Achita, tell me if that's any better. I have done as you have requested. Uh, Joel is asking Olympus uh, Mzuiko 12 to 40 mil lens f2.8 Pro for the GH5. Would it be better choice than the Lumix 12 to 35 to 8? Okay. 12 to 40 versus 12 to 35 to 8. Um, I have never used that lens, so I cannot speak from any experience whatsoever. In general, okay, one of the huge advantages of Micro Four Thirds is that it's a common mount. Different manufacturers make lenses for it, and that is a wonderful, beautiful thing. I have several lenses that are not from Panasonic. Absolutely love them. Super cool. But if you're looking for the... Uh, I, I don't know if I should say fastest autofocus because I do not know if the autofocus speed is better if you're using Lumix lenses versus non-Lumix lenses. That I do not know. Someone's asked me that. I need to get that clarified. I don't know. But things like image stabilization, they will be better with the Lumix lenses because uh, especially the newer ones. So if you're buying a GH5 with the OIS version 2 in it, the lenses that have OIS 2 in it will give you the best stabilization. But that said, a GH5 with OIS 2 and a lens with OIS 1 paired together is only about a half stop difference from both being OIS 2. So that's something to consider. So if you're, let's say you've got a 12 to 35 f2.8 lens, um, the older Panasonic one, and you're buying a GH5, you don't need to upgrade to get image stabilization. You would get about half a stop. That's what they're, I, I haven't verified this myself, but that's what I'm being told. It's about a half a stop difference. So it's not gonna be a huge difference. Um, if you're going from a non-stabilized lens, well then obviously it's a huge difference. Or if the the Olympus lens you're talking about, which I have no idea, um, I, mean, I don't know anything about that lens. If that lens has stabilization built into it, I don't know how it's gonna compare to using the native one, but the native one will be the best one for image stabilization. Focus. Speed, I don't know. I, just, I don't know the answer. That makes a difference. Uh, and then as far as IQ, image quality, I, no idea. That's that's left up to people who do those kind of comparisons. Um, but if you own the lens, I'm sure it's a fabulous lens. And if you're happy with it, just keep using it. I mean, come on. You know, at the end of the day, it matters what you think. And what matters is the image that you get and whether you like the image. That's all that really matters. Okay. Um, someone's asking what application am I using right now on the iPad? This is this is a switching app that is connected to my Blackmagic ATEM switcher. The app is called Strata Pro. I know one day, I promise, I promise, I will do a whole tour of this whole thing. It's 
It's not like, a, oh, let me just drag the camera around and show you. It's going to be really complicated, and I really have to figure out how to do it. And it can't be live because there's two. I have to go upstairs. There's all kinds of crap to do. So it's like, I will do it. I promise. Just not today. <laughs> OK, um, I think that's it. No questions on resolution coming in. Lovely live audience today. Lovely to see you all out there. And um, in the next GH5 sample video, I will hit render on as soon as this is done. It was clogging up the CPU on my streaming machine, so I had to stop it. But that will be rendered and uploaded. It'll be up within an hour or so. Um, super. So that's that. All right, guys. That's it. I'm out of here. Take care of yourselves. And oh, hey, uh, sorry, Ach uh, Achita, tell me if this sounds any better since I took the, the uh, high-end kilohertz down a little bit. Um, I want to know because you're the one who asked for it, so please do let me know. All right, guys. Take care of yourselves. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.